good morning everyone thank you uh, for joining the session and um, today we will talk about a subject and uh, that is called output determination output determination is or can be used in different modules in different functions and in different areas it can be used in sales it can be used in purchasing it can be used in delivery it can be used in billing it can be used in many many different areas and the same concept of output determination happens in sap so concept of output determination is say output determination is used for the purpose of communication is used for the purpose of communication when i say used for the purpose of communication that basically means whether you are in sales whether you are in purchase or any other many other processes or shipping or transportation in all these different processes you always have to communicate your business partner you have to communicate with the customer you have to communicate with the vendor you have to communicate with the freight forwarding company you have to communicate with the transportation company so that is why whether is a sales process or purchase process or shipping process or transportation process and many other billing process you have to communicate with your customer so how do we allow that communication between us and our business partner to happen that is called output determination now if you see here it can be used in many many places in sales delivery billing purchasing etc and many places many different kind of outputs you can generate and you can send to your business partners like customers or suppliers vendors etc now the next point here is transportation medium transportation medium basically means when we communicate with our customers then how do we communicate what is the process so one of the most commonly used communication is the printing you will print customer invoice you will print sales order confirmation you will print sales quotation you will print purchase order and then you will print purchase order and give it to supplier you will print your uh, customer invoice sign it and give it to your customer so printing is the most widely used still communication media which a lot of people will be using the second one is the fax and telex the third part is external transmission when i say external transmission that basically means being able to communicate nowadays through email sales office that basically means you want to send the notification within the sap office uh, functionality and then there is a edi edi is stand for electronic data interchange edis are very very widely used in us so in us in canada and several european countries edi is very widely used on edi i have a separate video so i have a separate video only on edi so we can do printing you can do fax you can do email 
you can send that notification within SAP Office function or you can send EDI. For EDI, I already have a separate video. You can go to my channel and you can find a video. I think more than our video I have only on EDI. Today, my primary focus is going to be output media printing. Because printing is also very, very widely used. You will send information to your customer through the printing. So that is why it is called output media. So all these different type of output media or medium of transmission are supported in SAP. You can print, you can fax, you can email, you can EDI, you can send a SAP office notification. So all those different communication methods are possible. The second part is output. Now, as I said before, output concept which I'm talking right now, that concept can be applied in sales, can be applied in purchasing, can be applied in shipping, can be applied in transportation, can be applied in billing. This output determination concept is very widely, very commonly used in all these different functions. So you understand one place, you can apply same concept everywhere now here we have something called header and out item output so header output and item output now what is the header output header output basically means there are some of the example of header output header output basically means you are transmitting the entire document when you're transmitting the entire document, that is an example of a header output. Now let's take some example. So customer invoice. Customer invoice, when you're sending, in the customer invoice, you have entire invoice. And because you have entire invoice into it, that is why you can have this entire invoice being sent as a part of your SAP. So you are sending the entire customer invoice document and because of that, this is called a header output. For example, in case of purchasing. So in case of purchasing, you will be sending the entire purchase order. You will be sending the entire purchase order to the, to the supplier. And because you're sending the entire purchase order, therefore purchase order is a header output because entire document is being sent. So you're sending your entire sales order, you're sending your entire billing document, you're sending your entire purchasing document, and that is why they are called header output. Similarly, you can also have item output item in case of item you are printing only for a specific item in a document not the entire document a specific item in the document so for example let's say you're printing labels yeah because you might have seen you can print different labels now when you're printing labels and which is stuck on the uh, different uh, products that label is an example of an item label output. Now, what is the meaning of it? The meaning of that is like um, because it is being printed, it has to be printed at item label. So, this label for this item, this label for that item, this label for third item, this label for fourth item, because every item will have their own labels. So when you're printing a label, then you're printing a label for a item. That is why it is called item label output. The second one is a certificate of analysis, for example. Certificate of analysis basically means as a part of quality certificate, when you're you know, sending the material or receiving the material. So when you're publishing a certificate, then that certificate is published for one specific 
material only and when you are publishing this item for a specific material only that is an example of certificate of analysis so in that case certificate of analysis is could be another example of line item parameters so these are different type of item parameters which we can have in a standard sap okay so you can have a header label parameter and you can have a line item label parameters now another thing is timing okay now before i go to timing let me create a particular transaction so we can create a sales order or you can create a purchase order is the same thing okay so let me create a sales order like we create any sales order so we go to sales and distribution we go to sales and we create an order and we create a sales order we i will see example on both side i will see i will take one example sales order and i will also take one example of purchase order so let's uh, take example of a uh, cash hit document type cs um which we use and uh, okay so we are taking document type cs so it's a cash sales order could be any other order type as well we take a customer so like entering any regular sales order so we select our po number select our po date enter the material enter the quantity okay so we have entered all of them okay now it's like any sales order we enter nothing different nothing unique here now i go to extras output header and edit this is where the output is defined in a sales order so i go to edit now when i go here then i have here something called output type you see that output type that is what you are seeing here extras output header and that is where we have discussed output type medium function partner number 3 okay now here this uh, we need to see that okay we th this rd03 came automatically now how come this rd03 came we have not entered this rd03 so from where this rd03 came how this media come all this information we didn't enter it is there how it is there from where it came so we need to talk about that now we are talking about here something called timing time so here we have a time you know so there are options here so you see that option here so up timing 1 2 3 4 okay. so four basically means you send the document immediately when you save so when you save the document output goes automatically immediately so that's the timing four number three basically means that you put in a batch run and when you put in the batch run then that output is triggered in the batch run so that is where the output type time 3 come into the picture or time 1 and 2 if you are using any other standard program normally people will use time 3 and time 4 either they will run the batch program uh, output in the batch like okay i going to print every day in the night at 6 o'clock i going to print every day in the evening for 7 o'clock i going to print every day in the evening 
nine o'clock. So people have a specific time, they run the batch program and based upon the batch program, they're gonna print everything. So that is where the time three come into the picture. Time four basically means I do immediately. The moment I enter the sales order, it prints. Moment I enter purchase order, it prints. Moment I enter the delivery, shipping document, it prints. Print ha happen immediately when you save a transaction. So when I save a purchase order, along with the uh, saving purchase order, it should also print. That is the time four, okay? So time three and time four. Now, another thing which we need to understand here is there is something called forms, okay? Now, what is the forms? So forms basically means the layout. So forms define layout. So when you're printing any document, it has to print in a prescribed format. So form define layout means how printed doc will look like so when you're printing a document it has to print in a prescribed format so you're printing a customer invoice then you know it has to be a logo this is the address this is how it's going to look like when you're printing a purchase order it will have a prescribed format because you when you're sending your purchase order to a supplier you only will be sending in a prescribed format when you're sending the your invoice to the customer you're sending that invoice in a prescribed format so that basically means we have a prescribed format that is what we are talking about here there is called a form okay where it is form so let's say you're printing this invoice this is how this invoice look like this is my logo this is the invoice number this is the customer number this is the date this is there this is item quantity there is a lines there is a box so all these different box and this is down dark area this is not dark all that is defined somewhere okay so where do we define this this is defined in sap there are two technologies one is called sap script and the second one is called smart forms so sap script sap script you can use it transaction code se 71 then the sap smart forms so one more important point for us to understand is that um sap script is not is old technology so because it's an old technology, therefore it is not being used that much. Maybe some people may be using because they may be still using the previous versions and all that, but SAP script in, in, in most cases is gone, it's not being used. Now what is being used nowadays is called smart forms. So smart forms technology will be used to define layout okay now changing a layout changing a form or creating a new form is programming so that basically means that will be done by the programmers you will not be doing it that will not be done by you that be done by the programmers the programmer would be doing it so making a change to this is never ever would be done by you it be done by a web programmer okay so that's one thing which is very important for us to understand that SAP script 
then the smartphones and the uh, script is old technology is gone and a smartphone with the new technology and that is the one which is being used and that is what people will be using so there's a technology and a smartphone is used how the layout will look like now another thing is how does the output determination works now look at this slide very carefully output determination works and these are different is a very busy slide okay. so let's understand this so output determination works on the basis of condition technique okay. so works on the basis of condition technique so now for example pricing so condition technique is used in many many places condition technique is used in many many different places in different areas in sap condition technique is also used in many other areas one of the very common area where the condition technique is used is pricing whether it is a sales pricing or whether it is a purchase pricing so if you're doing the pricing in a sales order or you're doing the pricing in the purchase order so there is a whole condition technique so condition technique is very widely used i have separate videos on my youtube channel for sales pricing to understand this condition technique in more detail and i also have a video on the purchase pricing so i have videos on my youtube channel for sales pricing and purchase pricing where i have described this pricing in much more detail so in a very very extensive detail i have described the both sales pricing and purchase pricing there are two separate videos for it you can find it in my channel so if you want to understand what condition technique is in more detail for the sales pricing i think i have a 6 7 hours videos yeah so there are about 6 7 hour videos which is only talking about uh the sales pricing and there is a one on the purchasing prices but the bottom line is that uh, output determination works on the basis of condition technique condition technique is used to basically define and determine output determination so when basically means if you understand the condition technique very well then you can also understand how from the output determination works so function the configuration the designing of the output determination is based upon condition technique therefore for most sales consultant and purchasing consultant or mm consultant understanding of condition technique is very very important because condition technique is not only used here condition technique is also used in many other different areas for example pricing whether it is in sales or whether it is in purchasing so we are that is what we are talking so what is the condition technique and now let's understand this that we have a slide here there is something called a procedure on the sales order header there is a procedure there is a output type there is access sequence there is a table there is a condition record now what is the meaning of that so what is the condition technique so condition technique so condition technique
condition technique has following elements and what are those elements so it includes it includes output determination it includes which is assigned to output type which is assigned to access sequence that is assigned to condition table and that is assigned to condition record so these are the element of condition technique output determination procedure okay so output determination procedure <laughs> okay now output it, so these are the different element of condition technique this is what we will be trying to understand and uh, so this is i mean sales order and we're going to do the same thing in purchase order as well same concept on both side so we select uh, exactly same actually we same it we select here and here we hit on the go to button and then we go to determination analysis if you go to determination analysis so that is what we see here in the determine analysis if you see there is a procedure what is the procedure so the procedure is v10001 so the procedure we see here procedure is v1001 see here there is a procedure if you click here and click here then that this procedure is linked to output type rd03 is linked to output type rd0 3 rd03 this rd03 output type is linked to access sequence 003 is linked to access sequence 003 003 no 002 002 now if you see here there is a there is this z z003 also which somebody might have configured i suppose so that is also there so bottom line is in this procedure v10001 um triple zero one actually we have uh, these two output types one is rd03 and the second one is um z003 there are two now from where we are coming this from where we are getting this so now we go to go to configuration so now what we have to do we go to configuration so we want to verify verify configuration so we want to verify configuration okay. so <coughs> so i want to verify the configuration for outputs so for that i open uh, another session so this is uh, to open another session 
So we open up the session. We go to configuration, we go to SPRO, and uh, we go to SAP Reference IMG. We go to sales and distribution. Then uh, we go to basic functions. And here we have output control, output determination, and then output determination. Now, if you see this output determination, it is in uh, sales activity, sales billing, delivery, many places. If you go to delivery, we'll see delivery also. This is the different condition technique. Here you define table, output type, access sequence, assign output type, determine procedure, and all that. That is what the different elements we talked about here, right? So first and foremost, we go to assign output determination procedures. So we start bottom up. So we go here in the bottom, and here we have a allocate sales document header we double click on it and uh, we want to see the procedure here now i want to go to my sales document as cs and uh, see here so document as cs is assigned to this procedure and that is why here this procedure in this document as v1001 appeared why this procedure came? This procedure came in sales order because in the configuration with my sales document type, this procedure V10001 has been assigned. Now, what is behind this? So we saw that uh, document type, doc type, CS is assigned sales doc type is a sales doc type cs is assigned to output procedure v1001 that is why we see here v1001 that is what we see here v1001 then we hit back then we hit back. That is what uh, we do here. Now, what is behind procedure? So now we want to go to maintain procedure because we want to see what is behind procedure. Same configuration apply everywhere. I've taken one example of sales. We we'll, can go to purchasing, we can go to shipping, we can go to transportation, we can go billing. Same concept will apply everywhere. Yeah. So we go to maintain output determination procedure. So here we have this procedure. There are many other procedures. You can configure procedures also. You can configure new output type also. So there's a procedure V11001, and then we go to control data. Now this procedure V001 is assigned to these two output types, RD03 and Z003. That is why we have here, in this procedure, in the sales document, RD03 and V003. So why these two appear here? These two appear here because in this procedure, we have these two condition type, RD03 and Z003, which is being defined. And that is why both of them appear here. And that is what we see, that V001 is assigned to RD03 and is also assigned to one more. You can have a many, many output types as well. You can define multiple output types. And you can have a, uh, like you have a two output types, you can have a three, you can have a four, you can have a five. Because you might have different layouts and different languages, whatever. So here, we out procedure assigned to condition type. That is what we see here. Procedure V1001 assigned to output type RD03 and Z003. Now we go back. Now we want to check what is behind this RD03. Now that is important. So first and foremost, now we go back and check what is behind RD03. Okay, now we go back, maintain output type. So here we go to maintain output type. Now want to, we want to see 
what is behind this output type there are 65 output type here so you can that basically means all these z's and y's and all that what you see they are all uh, output type which has been configured by different people so you can configure as many output type as you want so here we have a rd03 and this rd03 is a cache sales inverse so we select that rd03 then we go to the details here so for rd03 we can assign first and foremost output type is assigned to access sequence so output type rd03 is assigned to access sequence 002 assigned to access sequence 0002 so this output type assigned to this access sequence that is why here in the sales order when we click on this output type rd03 we see 0002 the 0002 coming because this access sequence is assigned to this output type that is assigned here now so what we saw so output type is important configuration so output type output type has many configuration but following important ele config elements What are those? So first and foremost is assigned to access sequence. Now, what is the purpose of access sequence? We'll talk about. The purpose is access sequence. So the first thing it is assigned to access sequence in this example, access sequence 0002. Now then we have a processing routine. If you click on the processing routine, then here we output type is assigned to print program. And assigned to a smart form. So that basically means output type is assigned to a smart form. So a smart form basically means that how the layout of this output will look like that is defined in the smart form. And that smart form is basically that smart form is basically assigned here. Now, changing a smart form, creating new smart form is programming. So that will always be created by a programmer. You cannot do that. Only a programmer can do. Okay. So there is a smart form. So the layout is being defined in here. And then there is a also a print program. So there is a print program. So here we have a something called print program. Print program basically provides the guidance and directions of the printing. How does the printing will take place? And that direction and guidance is defined in the print program okay defined in the print program that is where the print program come into the picture that is why output type is following important config elements Access sequence, a smart form, and the print program. Okay. And that is what we see here in this table as well. That is that is what we see here. Now, when you say layout, what is that basic limit? So if you go back, if you go back, if we save, so we save it. Okay. So we save the sales order. Okay. So see the message in the bottom? Yes, sales. 25235 has been saved okay we go back into the sales order we hit enter we hit enter and then we go to extras output 
header and there's a print preview also if you click on the print preview this is how if you're going to print this is how it will look like now this is very basic layout because this is out of a standard sap that is why in most cases you will change this output you will change the layout you will put your company's logo and all this information and all that different things okay so that is where we can have all these different and this layout is defined where so now this layout this is the how it look like this is defined where this is defined in this smart form this rbador01 in this layout this la this layout has been defined in that smart form now obviously this is smart form is very basic it's from standard sap you will change it you will put the logo and all those different things and we will do that that you will do here in this smart form okay that is the purpose of smart form is that is the purpose of smart form is that is basically the configuration now another thing which i want to go to the configuration um, is related to asking answering one question and that question is that here in this sales order if you see the sales order for example and if you go to extras output header now here we have this rd03 now how come this rd03 came we did not enter this rd03 so from where this rd03 came this rd03 came because there is a condition record now where is this condition record so i exit out from here i exit out from here and then we close this we go to master data and in the master data we have outputs and here see that many many places in sales shipping delivery billing transportation many places you can maintain your output condition record so we are looking for the sales so we go to sales here now here we can maintain vv11 vv12 13 create change if you want on shipping you can create shipping if you want billing you can create billing so these are called output condition record this is the master data and when you have this master data then this because of this output condition record system automatically determine output type in sales document so what is the meaning of it let's understand this so we can maintain output condition record that will appear automatically in a document so once you have output condition record that output condition record will automatically appear in the document whether it's a sales document whether it's a purchasing document whether it's a delivery document transportation document billing document any document yeah so if you see here so there is i want to go to bv12 just to check because record is already there nothing to create we just need to verify so in output type i type rd03 because that is the output type we are talking about so we go rd03 we put a document type as a cs then we hit enter now see this record is already maintained because this record this master data is already maintained that is why in the sales order that record was automatically came so here we have output type cs we have a function bp we have media number 1 we have a timing equals to 3 and then so this is now couple of other important thing we select this here and we go to communication now in the communication what we have the sales document type cs an output type output device is lp01 so output device is lp01 now what is lp01 lp01 
is the address of the printer because where you will print so you will print in this printer and you see the drop down we have with these two okay now these are the standard uh, uh, printer which is being assigned your basis people your networking people will connect many many printers or as many printers as you require to sap because you know a lot of these company where sap being used as large company so they have a printer on the third floor and one on fourth floor and five on fourth floor and then there is one on the cafeteria side and there could be numerous printers so when you're printing your invoice and printing your order which printer because you might have a designated printer where you would like to print maybe in your office so there where you can define and you can link multiple printers to the sap that is the output type you print immediately you you want to print one copy and how many copies you want to print this is all master data so that basically means out condition output condition record is important output condition record does what it basically determine determine output info automatically automatically in a document the document could be sales document could be purchasing document could be delivery document billing document it also define which output type hmm? timing business partner information which printer hmm? which printer you want now one more thing which we need to understand here if we let check it here there is also one button here called language you know is that language what is this language is for so many time and it is very common situation when you are uh, printing you would like to print in your language if you are in the us you will print in english if you are doing it in Can canada you may be print in english and french if you are doing it in mexico you can do in spanish so that basically means one output type you might require to print in different languages because output type are always specific to a language so according to the language you will be doing the printing so printing is done according to your language that's why this language word here so when you so because if you maintain this data that's why this output data is important because based upon your output data entire information get automatically copied okay that is why this output data come into the picture so that is why we have a output data okay so we can have all that information here in output condition record so that is uh, now i want to take uh, one simple example i take an example in the in purchase uh, sales i want to take one example in quickly in the purchasing as well exactly same concept so we have sales and i want to to go back to the purchasing and i want to take an example in the purchasing as well so let's say i'm creating a purchase order so we we took one sales order and we want to take same in purchase order exactly same concept not similar same yeah so we can enter a let's say vendor we enter the purchasing group we enter the material you know like we creating a regular quantity like regular purchase order as we create many many time yes 
same view. Now here, where is the output type? If you look at it here, there is something called messages. Now that message is basically represent where you get your get to see your output. If you go back, same thing is output type N E U assigned to this media. This is a business partner. This is a language. We select that. We go to communication method assigned to the printer. I want one copy. Print immediately and print on this printer ID. And then we go back. Now, same thing for configuration also. And here also we go to determination analysis. Now, in the determination analysis, here also we have a procedure R. Now we saw the different procedure, and here we have a procedure RMBEF1. Now, how come this procedure is coming from where this is coming? Now let's verify the configuration. Same concept. So rather than sales, now we go to MM module. We go to MM. We go to purchasing. And uh, if we scroll down, we, there is a messages. Same concept. There is an output control. There is a message determination. So rather than output determination, it's called message determination. Same thing. And here you see that again, message determination could be in quotation, could be purchase order, and agreement, exclusion agreement, inbound delivery, many, many places. If you understand one, apply so many places. So that basically means one, two, three, four, five, five different areas in MM. You can use the same concept. Same thing in purchase sales also. So God knows, maybe 20 different places, same concept apply. So message control for purchase order. If you click on it. So here we have something called assign a schema to purchase order. We double click on it. And here we say that to the purchase order, what is my procedure assigned? RMBEF1. That is why we have a procedure here called RMBEF1. That is where it is coming from here in the configuration. Now we go back, maintain. Uh, we go to maintain message uh, determination schema purchase order. We double click on it. This is where we have RMBF1. Then we go to control data. Now, in this procedure, RMBEF1, we have all these different procedures which is being defined. See that here? NEU and MAHN and all that. That is why here. You will see all that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, all these different output types which you're seeing here, they're coming because in this procedure we have all these different output types. If I want to verify this output type, NEU, if you go back, if you go back, we click on it, click on it, then we go to message type, we click on it, then we can go to message type for purchase order. And here we have something called maintain uh, message type for PO. <clears throat> so here we have a something called a NEU. So there is a NEU and same thing. Assigned to access sequence Z987. If you go back here, an EU is assigned to Z987 because this access sequence is here. Now, again, if you go to processing routine, in the processing routine, it's assigned to print program. Same thing, assigned to print program. It's also assigned to a smartphone. This is a smartphone. So there is a layout. Pure layout. Now, pure layout is assigned in this layout. And if you go back, and if you see here, if you go back, and uh, there is a print preview program. So, if you see here, you go back, you see that there is a print preview. We click on this print preview. If you want to print this purchase order, this is how this purchase order will print. 
this is the layout you have all this box and purchase order date and all this and this comment and item price quantity all that layout which is being defined now where this layout is defined this layout is defined in this smart form now obviously this layout is very generic because in this layout you do not have a, your company name and address and logo and all those things so 99.9 percent .9 of cases this is smart form will be changing now who will change this layout this layout will be changed by the programmer only programmer can change this okay so only programmer can change it you cannot change it so only programmer can change it and that is why you have a, a smart form which is assigned here same concept allow now so this is the configuration now one more thing which i want to talk is that how come this output determines condition record remember we talk about output condition record in sd now the same thing is also there output condition record in mm so here if you go to messages this came automatically we didn't enter this so any u and print and this all that this came automatically now how come this came automatically because the same condition record so exit out so we close it and I exit. Exit. Now I go to logistic. So there is a output and is go to materials management. Purchasing master data. And here we have all different kind of a master data. And one of them here is messages. This is for output. And these are different areas where output can be used. We are looking at the purchase order. This is a purchase order. This is a transaction code MN04 to create that output condition record for purchasing. And for this was change, this was display. Now record is already there, so nothing to create. We just need to verify. We go to change. And uh, output type is NEU. So RD03 was for sales. NE0, NEU. Is for purchase. We hit enter and uh, we can go and purchase transaction. Now, one more thing which you can verify actually. So, if you go to determination analysis, if you go to NEU and uh, see that it is assigned to Z98, output not found not found and number 330 it has been found now what is that basically means so exit out and we go to key combination so we have a different key combination one two three four so if you go back here 10 20 30 40 one two three four it at what level we want to create a record we want to create a record here 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 or here so what we see here the record is found at a level three so for this key combination record has been maintained for previous two there is no record maintained we can select this option because for this option record is maintained hit enter purchase document type nb not bn nb And we hit execute now this record is maintained so because this neu has a document nb this is my partner function this is my language uh, media number one which basically means print this is three which basically means timing language we select that we go to communication and here we can define output type and we can define your number of messages print immediately and all that all that different thing has been defined here and because this record has been defined here that is why this record appears here same concept in both sides now there is a one transaction code called nace now nace is one transaction code which allow you to do various 
almost all output related functions in one transaction code for all modules, whether it's a sales, whether it's purchase, whether it's for shipping, for transportation, for billing. You don't need to go to different areas. The transaction code NACE. Okay, what is NACE? So we type transaction code N A C E. Okay. We exit out. If I type N A C E, reach here. Now in this one transaction code, you can maintain. Now here all transaction code is there for inbound delivery, for RFQ, for purchase order, for entry, for uh, agreement, for sales, for invoice verification, for shipping, for billing, for sales all different areas application basically means in what area you want so all those different applications same concept applies so now if we take example of let's say purchasing purchase order which is output type ef and here we can see the same thing so we procedure we can say output so same place you can do everything. So you don't need to go to multiple uh, areas. If I want to say output type for related to purchase order, I can say output type related to purchase order and all the information which you want to see. Same thing, if I go back, if I go back, go back, if I go back, and uh, I want to see in uh, purchase also, this one purchase, if you want to sales also, so let's go to sales. If I want to see the procedures in sales, these are different procedures in sales. This one we are looking at the cash sales. If you go to control, this is the same configuration we can see on both sides. Okay. So thank you very much and uh, take care. Bye. Thank you.